How's it guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So in today's video we're going to be looking at another very cool species of house snake and that is none other than the Tanzanian stripe house snake or uh, their scientific name is Boaden lineatus. Now this house snake is um, different to uh, our more common house snakes like the Boaden capensis and the Boaden uh, fuliginosus in a few different ways and um, one being their unusual patterning and that is the perfect stripe that runs down the side of their body, a perfect white stripe that uh, in most cases runs from the, from the head right through to the tail, uh, which is really beautiful and striking, and which, is, uh, which makes these species so well known. And then the other significant uh, thing is their size. They are a much smaller species of house snake, and in most cases they only reach about half the size um, of our more common house snakes. And then the other... Um, a thing that's quite different with them is their head shape. They have a slightly different head shape and some of them also have a bug eye which is a naturally um, occurring uh, variation of them. They have a slightly more bulgy eyes and I'm, and um, this is so that they can see better at night. They're highly evolved um, to have very good eyesight at night and uh, we see this a lot with other desert reptiles as well. They have the bigger eyes so they can absorb more light and they can see better and have better vision at night. So these features make this uh, house snake species really interesting, really beautiful and great to work with. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of our adults here. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of our, our holdbacks. And then we're also going to have a look at some babies that are hatching now, which is really exciting. And we can teach you a little bit more about them and just show you how we care for them. And also, um, yeah, just so you can better understand them. Their, their care requirements are actually very similar to our other house snake species. Although they do, their babies do require a bit more attention and also the females require a bit more attention when it comes to breeding because they're actually quite good breeders. So if you don't uh, pay careful attention, they can uh, breed too much and it can put a bit of uh, a health risk on the females, which we uh, want to obviously avoid at all costs. So let's go check out these beautiful uh, Tanzanian striped house snakes. Okay, so here we have one of our young adult female Tanzanian striped house snakes. And you can straight away see uh, that incredible stripe that runs from, from the head all the way down the side of their body. You, do, you can notice that the stripe does uh, tend to fade out towards the end. It's not as um, clean and intense as it is near the head or the upper part of the body, the upper half of the body. But it's still really beautiful and significant and, and different from all the other, other house snake species. And this white stripe really uh, makes this species unique and that gives it its common name, Tanzanian striped house snake. You can also see um, a slight bug eye in this. Its eyes are significantly uh, a bit bigger and they're like protruding a little bit, which gives it that like bug eye look, uh, which is, it's a really um, incredible adaptation that. But just look at the stripe on this female. It really is beautiful. And now this is a mature female, she's a young adult, so you can just see how much smaller they are than the capensis or fuliginosis. And that stripe is just amazing. These guys don't like to get too cold. They do come from a warm area. So they enjoy their normal hot spots of about 32 degrees Celsius. And winter they can have a slight drop, but you don't want to get them too cold. And you can just see that R it is really amazing. And now the females, you've got to be careful with, with the breeding, as they are prolific breeders and they lay a lot of clutches. So we use, uh, we make sure to keep the males and the females separate to avoid excessive breeding. Um, and then just make sure that they're on a good feeding routine so that the females don't lose weight in between clutches. And we find that they prefer a, um, a few smaller meals, like a few small frozen thawed fuzzies rather than uh, a larger meals at a time. And then we also use temperature. Um, we reduce the temperature out of season during winter just to stop the females from producing follicles and laying eggs. Otherwise they just keep laying and it can affect their health. Okay, so here we have one of our holdback babies from this last season. So this baby is a few months old now and you can just see how incredible this animal is. So we are 
selectively breeding um, for a cleaner, broader stripe, um, just to try and improve the quality of the stripe. So all our holdbacks that we keep, we try and keep the ones with the best stripe, like you can see with this animal. It's just really amazing. Uh, this is a little female, and you can see she also has a little bit of a bug eye, but just all around an incredible snake. You can see the shape of the head is slightly different uh, to the capensis or fuliginosis, and it is just such an impressive house snake, and that white stripe is really impressive looking. The biggest challenge with breeding the species is not really getting eggs, it's about raising the babies. Because it's a smaller species, the have smaller eggs and the babies come out smaller and therefore some of them do struggle with pinkies. We find that um, the, the smaller younger females that have smaller eggs, they have smaller babies and those babies can be sometimes a challenge to get feeding. But the older females that lay bigger eggs and we hatch out bigger babies from them, we find that they, those babies have very little trouble going onto pinkies. And those babies that um, don't want to eat pinkies, we then give them uh, we try them with scented pinkies, so we take a, say for example, a tropical house gecko, which we get here on our walls in our homes in South Africa. We take a tropical house gecko and we just rub it on that frozen thawed pinky and we pop it in. And obviously we choose the, uh, the smallest mouse pinky we can find, just to make it easier for them to, to eat it. And we scent that with that tropical house gecko, and that often works. And also braining uh, frozen thawed pinkies, that method also works uh, for non-feeders. Sometimes we find it's also just a, a matter of time. So we don't rush it too much. They do last quite long on their egg yolk. We just offer food and sometimes it can take three or four weeks um, for them to uh, accept their first meal. And only after about three or four weeks, we then start trying alternative methods if they still haven't accepted a pinky mouse on their own. But sometimes it just takes them a little bit of extra time to get hungry enough to then want to eat. And uh, yeah, we don't try and stress them out because they are small, delicate snakes. So we'd be patient with them and we just give them a bit of time. And most of them all go into pinkies eventually. And once they start eating, they grow really quickly. Males can mature within a year. The males can breed really small and uh, females we give about two years to mature. They probably can breed a bit sooner, but we try and make sure that they get a bit bigger before we try and breed them for the first time. And the head markings on this baby are really cool. So very happy with this whole back. So my advice to you when it comes to the care of the species, I would keep them the same as you would uh, your normal common house snakes, like your Boeden capensis and Boeden fuliginosis. Just keep them in a nice, simple setup. You can use newspaper, you can use natural wood shavings, aspen snake bedding, anything like that to keep them on. And then just make sure they've got that hot spot of around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, which is around 80, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That hot spot is very important for the species, so just make sure they have that hot spot. And then you can keep them just the same as you would any other house snake. They're very easy to keep species. Um, my only advice would just be to, if you're getting any animals, try and get them uh, well established on pinkies. And also just make sure that they can't escape the enclosure. These guys can get out of the smallest little spaces um, as they are a smaller species. So just make sure that they can't get out of the enclosure that you are keeping them in. But all around a great species and also, as you can see, very easy to handle and easy to work with. So let's go check out the babies that we've got hatching now. Okay, so here we have this clutch that has just recently hatched of our Tanzanian striped house snakes. And you can see how small these little guys are. They're such a, a small species of house snake. They're, they're literally, in some cases, about half the size of your uh, Boeden capensis or Boeden fuliginosis. So these lineatus are really small guys and they can be quite challenging as hatchlings uh, because of their small size. But most of them are quite good feeders and they do eat pinkies. But some of the small hatchlings can struggle a little bit with the size of the pinky and they might need some encouragement with uh, assist feeding or 
if you can get ideally some small geckos until they get a little bit bigger until they can handle a pinky mouse a day old pinky mouse so these are the eggs looks like everybody is out they've all hatched out of there and they are just such beautiful snakes and i just love their dark brown color and then they have no other patterning besides that beautiful lateral white strap that runs down the whole length of their body you can see some have a thinner strap and others have a broader strap i like the ones with the thick white strap on the side like that one there maybe that one will be a one to hold back for future breeding and then you can see some have a much thinner stripe and then they also vary in brown some are like a a coffee brown some are like a dark chocolate brown so the brown color does vary we are starting to work on a t minus albino variety of the tanzanian stripe house snakes so we're also excited about that but they're just a really cool species all in all and we're very happy with these babies they are prolific breeders and you actually have to be very careful with the females. They just consist, they lay when it's breeding season and you're feeding a lot, they just keep laying. So you've got to uh, really just watch the female's weight, uh, make sure that she doesn't overbreed and put a lot of strain on her body. And we also start cooling the temp, we uh, cool the temperatures for these guys. They don't need a, a brumation period. We just have a cooler period, which then stops the female from producing eggs. Otherwise she just keeps producing eggs and they can't put strain on them. But they're very good breeders, these guys. But they have to be just carefully maintained. So I'm just going to move these guys into a holding tub. You can see that they have like this dull sheen over them. And that is because they are, are going to be shedding soon. So that these babies are all actually in the blue. And they're getting ready for their first shed. And some of these will have a slight bug eye, which the Tanzanian stripes do. They have like a bulgy eye, a little bit like the mentalis which is the Namibian bug-eyed house snake, or the bug-eyed house snake. Um, but I find that the, the bug-eye only develops as they grow. So as babies, you don't see it so much, but as yearlings, you can start to see with some of them, the eyes bulge, and some do it more than others. And look at that stripe on this one. And he's really little, but he's got a nice broad stripe. And that's what I really personally like. They're such cute little babies. I'm just put, putting them in this holding tub for now. And then we'll separate them into the individual tubs. Make sure they have heat and water. And these babies are quite big. What we find is that the older females, the bigger, older, bigger females, they give us bigger eggs. And we incubate the, uh, the eggs at a slightly lower temperature to try, to try and prolong... Um, oh, this little guy is escaping to try and prolong the incubation process. And we find with cooler temperatures, we get bigger babies and bigger babies eat pinkies better. So we incubate them at 28 degrees. We don't let it get warmer than that. And that just slows down the incubation a little bit and gives the babies more time to get bigger in the eggs. Because if it's too warm and the, the eggs hatch quicker, which is, can be nice, but then the babies are really small and then that can be very difficult to get feeding. Look at that stripe. It seems to break down towards the end, but it's in good and re really nice specimens. It runs all the way. Look at that stripe. You see it break down towards the end of the tail. Another really nice baby. And these are actually quite big because these came from one of our older females who gave us bigger eggs. Another nice baby there. So yeah, I'm not disappointed with the size of these at all. And the cooler temperature, incubation temperatures are definitely paid off with these. And it's something we've learned over the years. Yo, look at the stripe on that one. I think that is going to be one of our holdbacks for sure. I love the thick white, uh, white stripe. Yeah, that one is beautiful. I'm very happy with that baby. Wow. Look at that thick stripe. And then you can see it like kind of breaks down towards the end, but it's still there. But right up by the, the top half of their body, it's really defined. 
And that is really beautiful. How many eggs have we got here? One, two, we've got six eggs. So yeah, six eggs and six beautiful babies. Beautiful baby Tanzanian stripe house snakes. What a pleasure. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed seeing those beautiful Tanzanian striped house snakes, and I hope you enjoyed seeing those babies. We're super happy with that clutch of babies that has just come out, and we've really enjoyed working with the species overall over the, uh, the years, and we've been working with them for quite a number of years now. And uh, I think they're just such a unique and interesting species of house snake. They're great to work with, and also it's quite nice that they are, they're small and easy to maintain species of house snake as well. So overall, just a, a great piece of house snake and they deserve a lot of respect. And I think um, they are going to gain a lot of interest um, in the next few years in the hobby just because of the increase in, in interest in house snakes. And it's just something different from your normal regular house snake. So overall, a great species. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment below. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.